Gary Johnson was asked about some questionable statements he made regarding climate change. Let's listen. You've said you're for free markets, you're against government regulation. And, th and this week, a, a, a comment circulating you made in 2011, where you said we have to think about climate change as a long-term issue. And here's what you said. I think that we should. And the long-term view is, is that in billions of years, the sun is going to actually grow and encompass the earth, right? So global warming is in our, in our future. <laughs> so that's you. Does that mean we don't do anything about it now? No, George, come on. Can't, can't we have a little humor once in a while? And that is long term. I mean, the plate tectonics. Uh, at one point, Africa and South America uh, separated. And I am talking now about the Earth and the fact that we have existed for billions of years and will going forward. Uh, look, what it points to also is the fact that we do have to inhabit other planets. I mean, the future of the human race is, uh, is space exploration. So no, that we should be prudent with the environment. We care about the environment. Look, clean air, clean water. I think the EPA exists to protect us against um, individuals, groups, corporations that would do us harm. Pollution is harm. Okay, uh, so there's a lot to talk about there. Um, let me just say up front, I think I dislike Gary Johnson less than I dislike Trump and Hillary, uh, and that's with his goofiness in the mix. <laughs> so I do think he's a, he's a little bit like aloof and weird and disconnected and a little goofy, but, um, I mean, Trump and Hillary are so bad so bad in so many ways that you look at a guy like Gary Johnson and you're like, all right, <laughs> what are we going to do? All right. So I, I don't have any like upfront disdain for Gary Johnson. Again, I think he's a little bit, a little weird, but uh, libertarians, broadly speaking, I agree with them on maybe 50% of issues, but the, the, the depth of the agreement with them on that 50% is deep. Like I think that on the issues I agree with them, I really agree with them. And it's, you know, there's no, like, half-assing it. They're just right on the 50% of stuff. So uh, I'm very open to the, the third-party candidates this election. I think they're very important. I'm happy Gary Johnson's in the race. Obviously, everybody knows I, I like Jill Stein even more. I mean, every now and then, Jill Stein takes a position on something where I'm like, oh, come on, Jill. Like, oh, let's try to eliminate nuclear weapons. Not going to happen and not necessarily a good idea. And stop. Stop. But still, I agree with Jill Stein on way more than anybody else in the race, so she would be number one on that ranking, on that list. So, uh, I'm open to the third parties this election cycle, and even if you're not open to them, the media should be discussing their plans and, you know, the fact that they're in the race more than ever, because only 9% of the country picked Trump and Hillary. And people are more open, according to the polling, this election cycle to third parties than ever before. So they should be discussed, and they should be discussed at length. So having said all that, let's dive into what he was saying here. Okay. <laughs> I, I had never seen those older comments where he said, Oh, well, climate change. Whoa, well, sun's going to take over the earth at one point, so what are you going to do? Dude, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And then his answer now was, Oh, come on, can't you take a joke? Look, I'll leave it up to you guys, but his tone at the time did not sound like a joke to me. That first clip where he said the goofy thing about the sun taking over the earth, that was in 2011. And then now he's like, oh, I'm just kidding, bro. I'm just kidding, bro. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. It was a joke. It was totally a joke. Anybody buying this? Anybody buying this? I don't think so, man. I don't think anybody's buying it. I don't think I buy it. It looked like you were serious. Like, oh, you want to play the long game? Well, I'll play an even longer game. Eventually, the Earth is going to fucking not exist because the sun's going to take it over. Checkmate. Oh, Gary, what are you saying? So he says it's a joke now. But then, Gary, you go on to say in this answer, quote, we do have to inhabit the other planets. <laughs> so wait, was it a joke or was it not a joke? And are you joking now? Because that's the solution. If you say, well, look, the sun is eventually going to destroy the Earth. So we got to do, you know, travel to other planets. That's what we got to do. <laughs> So now you're giving a real policy answer to the joke, joke answer in 2011? I, again, it's like, what do you, is that another joke? It, your story's not consistent. It's not adding up anymore. So you're saying it was a joke, but now you're answering, now you're giving an actual policy answer to what you said was a joke. So no, seriously, let's go to inhabit the other planets, though. <laughs> 
Okay, I mean, look, to be super fair to Gary Johnson, that's technically true that at some point, if human beings want to survive, you got to go to other planets. <laughs> but it just seems, it seems like a weird time to bring that up when we can still do massive, you know, reform to fight off the greenhouse effect and climate change. By the way, reforms that he largely opposes. And that's a gigantic problem. But then that leads to the final point here, which is I was actually surprised by his comments on the EPA. Because he said on the EPA there uh, that he, he wasn't against it. Guys, the standard run-of-the-mill, down-the-line libertarian answer on the EPA is abolish it. Gotta abolish it because it's a restriction on liberty and freedom to have the government tell you what you can and cannot do. And if you're, you know, polluting stuff, well, it's on your own property and it's your own business. So it is what it is. There should be no uh, regulation of the marketplace. We should have a totally free marketplace. This is, you know, anarcho-capitalism, effectively. And that's how we should function. And everything would be better that way. It'd basically be a utopia if that was the case. So actually, credit to Gary Johnson for saying, pumping on the brakes there and saying, no, no, EPA, cool. Cool. We should have an EPA. Great. That makes you a little better than the other libertarians, for sure. Um, but overall, yes, he does have troubling beliefs on climate change. Um, it's hard, man. When you get libertarians, there's a, there's a, there are two competing issues when it comes to the environment. On the one hand, obviously, like anybody else, they want to breathe clean air and, you know, have basic regulation. But then on the other hand, their stance against regulation is so strong and so strident that some, some libertarians do all these kinds of rationalizations to try to say, no, there's no reason to regulate the marketplace because all that other stuff is made up. So that's why you see many libertarians who are climate change deniers, for example, and many libertarians who, you know, downplay the effects of pollution because that's the only way they can hold pure to that ideology of all regulation is bad, is to say, no, seriously, there's no need for it. And it's overhyped the downsides of climate change. It's overhyped the effect that pollution has. So, Gary Johnson, I honestly think with the EPA point, he may have pissed off some of his supporters. Because many of his supporters who are just down-the-line libertarians are like, no, we want to abolish the EPA. You didn't say abolish it, now I'm pissed off at you. So, uh, I don't know, he's kind of in a pickle here. And he had some, he had some momentum recently, uh, but, you know, actually not recently. He had some momentum going back a month or two. But recently, he's been kind of falling off, and statements like this are a good example.